The M1 chip has impacted the computer industry a lot. I think it's an understatement when I say this, but this little chip is now powering the latest iMac to the portable iPad Pro and bringing these devices to a whole different league of raw power. But there's always an underdog, and it is the M1 Mac Mini. The M1 Mac Mini is one of the most important devices for Apple right now. It offers great value for money, delivers insane performance, and is reliable. But why does it matter? Here's my review of this lovely machine after using it for six months. Before we begin this video, we have to go back to the year 2005. What's next? You know, I wish I had a nickel for every time somebody asked me that. <laughs> Why doesn't Apple offer a stripped down Mac that is more affordable? And so today, we think we know what they have in mind and we're introducing it. It's called the Mac Mini. <laughs> the Mac Mini is BYODKM. What does that mean? Right? BYODKM. It means bring your own display, keyboard, and mouse. Okay? We supply the computer, you supply the rest. This is one of the key takeaways here. When you buy a Mac Mini, you're not required to buy an Apple ProRes display or an Apple keyboard. Unlike today, where it's essential to buy a phone charger when you buy an iPhone. Oh, they got sued for this. Lovely. In 2018, if you had $800 and wanted a capable machine that is able to edit 4K videos without any performance issues, there wouldn't be one. There was the Intel-based Mac Mini, which barely made it through editing videos, and the MacBook Air was just not powerful. To explain why the M1 Mac Mini matters, I divided this video into four main segments. Price, performance, the little guy theory, and my six months later review. So there are two models of the Mac Mini. The first one is $499. Now $499 with inflation is around $684. That's very close to M1 Mac Mini $699 base variant which features 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And this is the one that I have. And I as a user have really changed a lot. I used to have an i7-3770 and a GTX 1050 Ti Windows build where I used to use Adobe all the time and this PC started to struggle with my 4K H.265 footage because of the old hardware and Adobe being Adobe the optimization was not just cutting it so my friend showed me that okay you should try Final Cut and I should say it was love at first sight. So I decided to upgrade to a compatible motherboard so that I can start hackintoshing my PC and well that was a big fail. I ended up wasting 7 days of my life but I want to say a big thank you to the r slash hackintosh community. They were really helpful and very kind. Before I bought it I was kind of skeptical about its performance and as I should be because I don't have the money to buy a new PC every year but the numbers were sadly just vague. The way Apple announced the M1 Mac was just very weird. The this times this increased benchmarks without showing any raw performance looked like a big scam. But I pushed the trigger for the 8 gig variant even after listening to a lot of reviewers saying not to buy the 8 gig variant. This is where my mind was just blown out. I installed Final Cut the first day I got the Mac, but I was still not accustomed to it, so I installed Premiere Pro running off of Rosetta. And I just wanna say, this is the raw, raw numbers, and here we go. Now the performance is great, as you've seen the numbers, but the M1 chip does bring in some problems. The biggest of them all is the limited native app support, which means if you do not use a lot of apps that are from Apple, then you're gonna have to wait for developers to completely optimize it so that you can get the full performance out of that application. 
I would say they are doing a really good job because almost all of the apps in the Adobe suite are now optimized. But the M1 Mac's biggest plus is that it is catered to a certain type of user. Let's talk about them. Beat the GameStop stock or Dogecoin. The most important win that really gets all the attention is for the little guy. To explain this concept, I asked Jonathan Morrison why the M1 Mac Mini matters according to him. I think from what I've seen, it's the most powerful because it has the best cooling system. And I know a lot of people are mad that, well, it has the same chip in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. It's kind of actually simple, right? The MacBook Air is quiet. It's not as great for sustained loads. It's still really good. If you want more sustained loads, get the MacBook Pro. But I think the Mac Mini is a sleeper because it's half the price of the Pro just as powerful maybe maybe if not more and i think that's why it's exciting right is the barrier to entry like we talked about i get excited at making stuff and when i see people make stuff and that's why i saw your passion and how much you cared and that's why i got out and talked to you because you want to make things so i think the mac mini opens the door for a lot of people you know people who want to make a podcast or music or video or develop, right? Like the thing screams. So I think that's like the, the low key MVP of the show, just because most people have a monitor already. Most, most people maybe have a keyboard and now you can just grab the Mac mini and kind of experience the M1. And for those who are like, well, I was really looking for a 16 inch MacBook Pro or maybe I wanted something more powerful. The Mac mini is kind of the cool thing that you can almost just grab to experience it and get an idea of, okay, is this for me? And then does the next M1X or M2 make sense? But at 699, it's a, it's a foot in the door and at least you can try it to see if it works in your lifestyle. Thank you for the awesome input, John. If you, my dear friends, haven't seen my podcast with Jonathan, then please watch it right after this video. Now, on to the next and final section of this video. Here's what I think about the M1 Mac Mini after using it as my daily driver for six months. The M1 Mac Mini is my primary computer. I've been editing videos for my clients and for my YouTube channel all on this tiny machine. In my opinion, the 8 gig variant is not for the people who edit huge 8K timelines, but it is perfectly capable to edit up to 4K 10 bit raw footage. The app support has improved a lot. The Adobe suite now almost works flawlessly and even my regular programs like Notion and Brave now have native M1 support and they work flawlessly. I must mention that if you're thinking of gaming on this Mac mini then don't. Only a limited titles are supported and that's the reason why I still use my trusty old Man of War for all my gaming needs. The board situation on the M1 Mac mini is yes full of dongles so here's how my setup is. For the two USB-A ports, the first USB port is connected to my main dongle which is connected to my Seagate 2TB external hard drive, an external microphone, Logitech wireless keyboard and an SD card reader. And the second USB-A port is connected to my Logitech MX Master 2S mouse. The two USB Thunderbolt ports are connected to my 500GB Samsung drive and to my main monitor using a dongle. And the HDMI port is connected to my second display. The M1 Mac Mini has seriously changed my workflow and it has finally completed the goal that Steve Jobs envisioned for it, a computer for everyone.